Imagine for a minute that your blood cells are shaped like sickles, sort of like that thing that the image of death carries. Ouch, right? But what exactly causes our friendly little red blood cells to turn against us? Sickle cell anemia is a blood disorder, where instead of supple, soft, frisbee red blood cells that live for 120 days, your body forms stiff, pointy, sickle-shaped cells that only live for 10 to 20 days. RBCs need to be soft and pliable to squeeze through your blood vessels safely and efficiently. So when they're pointy, they can get stuck in there. When this happens in the chest, abdomen, or joints, it can cause pain. If they get stuck in the hands or feet, you can get swelling. And of course, if they get stuck in vital organs, they can cause infections, or if they get caught in the eye, vision problems. And if that wasn't bad enough, the brittle cells can break apart, delaying oxygen delivery and causing fatigue. This all sounds terrible. It was first described in 1910 in a dental student named Walter Clement Noel, who went to a doctor in Chicago complaining of pain. But this student wasn't from Chicago, he was from Grenada. Sickle cell anemia predominantly affects approximately one in 400 African-American births. It was a disease known in Africa for about 5,000 years, but it had never been described in Western medicine before about 100 years ago. The doctor in Chicago, whose name was James B. Herrick, was the first to describe it in a paper, and over the next century, many doctors have attempted to uncover just how this debilitating disorder works and why it mainly affects those of African descent. In the 1930s, a DC-based doctor named William Cardozo was one of the first black doctors to conduct research into this disease, and he did so with a grant from Alpha Phi Alpha, the first black fraternal organization. Cardozo felt that research into sickle cell anemia had, quote, reached an impasse, and that no one had yet found the cause of this horrible disease. If someone could provide a new stimulus to get the research going, he wrote, maybe we could discover more. His research, published in 1937, helped medicine realize that sickle cell anemia was inherited. Thanks to his research, we now know that sickle cell anemia came from us, and he helped explain why it mainly affected people of African descent, which is huge. While he was working on that, other doctors started to realize that this disease was based on oxygen content in the blood. In fact, Quebecois researchers in 1930 Montreal took a seven-year-old black girl and restricted blood flow to her finger with a rubber band. This probably wouldn't pass an ethics board today. In doing so, they found, though, that sickle cells formed in the low oxygen environment of her fingertip. They learned that with a bit of hypoxia, or lack of oxygen, the normal cells could collapse into all manner of weird and pointy shapes, nearly instantly returning to normal when exposed to air. Their methods were questionable, to say the least, but the results did shape future research. In the mid-20th century, doctors discovered that a single amino acid was responsible for the hemoglobin on the red blood cells that caused the sickling. But now that we understand the disorder enough to try and solve it, unfortunately, we're at another moment when we may need more new stimulus, like Cardozo said. According to a clinical investigation from 2007, there are many possible treatments for this disease, including a bone marrow transplant, but there is still no cure. One option is medicine that helps fetuses develop more hemoglobin, but it can make the disease worse. Maybe in the future, we could get genetic manipulation of the systems that help our bodies create blood using genome engineering or gene therapy. But for now, sickle cell anemia is just out there, a life-threatening thorn in many people's sides. Cardozo was one of many doctors of many races in the hunt for causes of sickle cell anemia. He's notable because in the 1930s, doctors that looked like him were often not welcome in the halls of medicine. That he was able to make a discovery for a disorder that affected so many people that also looked like him is a pretty big deal. So we're happy to recognize the part he played in this story for Black History Month. For more on red blood, watch Jules' video about what bone marrow actually does here. Hint, it is very important. And please subscribe for more Seeker. When I think of red blood cells, I think of those soft little frisbees we used to throw around as kids. I used to hit my brothers with them. Maybe that's why I think of RBCs as just so darn friendly. Thanks for watching.